Amen. I haven't been here, amen, in, in, a, in a while. Amen. So, amen, let me tell you, amen, that I'm still on assignment. Can the church say amen? I'm still doing what does say that the Lord. Amen. Been very busy here lately. Amen. Praise God. A lot of things are going on. I make some announcements after the service here this evening. Amen. Thank you for coming in. Amen. God bless you. Amen. The mother Joseph the prophet. God bless y'all. The mount. Amen. Praise God. Come on, true bone. Can the church say amen? A few weeks ago, we celebrated Easter. Can the church say amen? I want to shout out. Uh, amen. We celebrated Easter. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I was able, wasn't able to deliver what I would, would consider an Easter message. Can the church say amen? Um, what I, what I decided to do, amen, was I want to make the devil all alive. Can the church say amen? I, I don't want to give the devil no foothold. Can the church say amen? So today, amen, I want to go back, amen, and a message that the Lord has dealt with me quite some time, amen. Uh, he, he wrote, amen. You heard the promo earlier today. Thank you for coming in. I see you, I see you. Amen, thank you, thank you. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. He wrote, uh, now I, I, I must be very Honest with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I heard that some years ago, amen, I didn't really, amen, praise the Lord. I, I didn't really know what it all meant, amen, because back in the day, amen, mama would take us to church, amen, and unlike the young folks do today, amen, we sat very quietly in the church, can the church, amen, and, and we would listen, amen, but no doubt, amen, praise God, we didn't really take in what the preacher was saying. Amen. So today, amen, praise the Lord, I want to go in and, and, and let you know that he wrote. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I feel good already. Amen. But listen it up. He rose the way the reason you can be able, watch me now, to watch me here on this social media platform is with what Jesus did nearly 2,000 years ago. All I wish I could get someone to say amen. Listen, amen. The reason you're sitting so comfortably right now in your living room or wherever you might be, amen, riding down the road is what a man did nearly 2,000 years ago on a place called God, Dr. Gotha, right outside Jerusalem City. He wrote, but the question I want to leave with you this evening, has he risen up in you? Hallelujah. Glory be. The only way he can rise up in you, you must be born again. And oh, there we go. Y'all know I don't get too far. I don't get too far from my main theme. You, you must be born again. Now, I know some of the young people, amen, praise God, they're hipping and hopping. Amen, praise God. But let me tell you something. While you hipping and hopping, you got to get it the same way we got it. You must be born again. Amen. And if the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the grave, if it resides in you, one day he'll quicken your mortal body. Lord, have mercy. The life that you live now. Amen, praise God. How many of you realize you will never die? Uh-uh. Can I get comfortable? Somebody tell me, what are you saying, preacher man? You will never die. Jesus Christ didn't create you to kill you. It's nowhere in the Bible where the devil was killed. Come on, somebody. I done read it from, from Genesis and Revelation, and he, he never was put to death. Amen. So you got to realize the way you is now, the way you live, is the way you getting up out of here. You might as well say amen. He wrote. Many scholars would tell you that's us the myth. Many scholars would tell you, well, preacher man, there's no, there's no facts on that, amen. But let me go back, amen, 
time just a little bit and take you to the word of God. How many of you realize that this B-I-B-L-E is food for your soul? No wonder the word of God says a man shall not live by bread alone, but every word, watch me now, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Some folks don't open their Bible until they get to church. Who I'm talking to? Some folks got more cobwebs on their Bible than they, can, than they got in their closet. But let me explain. How can you prove your faith if you don't read the word of God? Faith come by hearing the word of God. A man ain't reading. If you're not reading the word, amen, you're not going in faith. And reading and getting some understanding. Bible said, lead not to your own understanding. You got to read, read, read every day. Meditate on this word day and night. Well, you know, preacher man, I just don't have time to, to, to do all of that. I got the word. God knew you got the word. I'm all the people that make up excuses. Excuses just like elbows and arms. Everybody got it. Oh, you didn't got well and well doing now. You got your nice home, your three cars sitting in the yard, and you retired, and maybe, amen, praise God, you don't work no more, amen. You just can't find time. But it amazed me when people say, well, I just don't have time. But you have find time to go in the target. You find time to go to corporate. You find time to go in public. You find time to raise your kids. You find all that time. But when you get down to the bottom, Oh, yeah, I'm going somewhere. Oh, I just ain't got no time. But I come with breaking news this evening. You got the same amount of time that I got. None of us got more time than the other. God grants you the same amount of time we give everybody else. The problem is, what are you doing with your time? But I want to take you back that Jesus came here, amen, and walked on this earth for somewhere around 33 to 35 years, amen. He, he, the Bible says in the first St. John, amen, that the word became flesh and he dwelt among men, amen, praise God. So Jesus was real and he was a real body. Come on, somebody, you got to feel this thing here this evening. Jesus was, was bone and meat and flesh just like you. Yes, he was. He was a person. But they put him to death. Jesus came here for one reason. Unlike some people, scholars say, Jesus was not running away from the cross. He was running to get to the cross. That's why he told Peter, said, put away thy staff. Y'all read the scripture. But in those days, the Romans had perfected this thing called crucifixion. Without the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I wouldn't be here today. Lord have mercy. Where well, I'm going with this this evening. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. I want that to resonate in the eye. I, I, I don't want you to leave this. Uh, Saturday night live a lot there to get one golden nugget. Without the crucifixion, you and I wouldn't be here today. Are you feeling me? I see you, Apostle Smith. Say amen. Listen, listen. The, the crucifixion, without the crucifixion, there is no salvation. There is no salvation without the crucifixion. And that's not going to follow it. If he didn't roll, he would just been a dead man crucified and laid in a grave somewhere. But I'll get to that in a minute. But the Romans had, had, had the Romans, amen, had perfected this thing called crucifixion. Amen, amen. What I'm trying to tell you this evening, the Romans, amen, had been an expert at putting people to death. Amen. You know, right now in America, we ain't, we ain't got it perfected. Amen. Because
done. I just heard a couple of weeks ago they tried to kill somebody uh, with some type of injection and the man was still living. But back in those days, the woman had, had perfected this thing crucified, crucifixion. So what I'm trying to tell you, once the Romans nail you to the cross, that was it. You, 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 that was it. It was cruel punishment the way they executed a person. Oh, amen, praise God. It's it, it, it described in the Bible that, that it, was, it was hard. Amen, praise God. It, 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 the crucifixion was most important to the believers. There's only two types of people I know, those that believe and those that don't. Either you're a believer this evening or a non-believer. But I come by to let you know this afternoon you're not both. You're not both. That's what's wrong with folks, amen. Preachers don't tell them you can't be both. Some people want to be both. They want to be in the church and in the world at the same time. They want to do all the worldly things, but yet want to call themselves a believer. I come by to let you know that that ain't true. The Bible says, how can you love too? Any man that loved the world, the love of the Father. And you know, I've seen many people now, they try to love the world and Christ at the same time. Huh? And nobody told me I couldn't have it both ways. Uh, 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 nobody told me I, I couldn't have it both ways, preacher. I, I just did. Amen. Trying to love too. It's a hard thing to do. No man can love two women. Can't do it. I mean, well, yeah, I've been okay. I've been around a while, amen. I've been on the road with truck drivers. They got a they got a woman in Nashville, they got a woman in Birmingham, they got another woman in Dallas, they got one in LA. Every stop he made, he got a woman. I said, My goodness, hallelujah. How in the world can you do that, amen? You can't love all them women. You women ain't no better. They doing the same thing. But I want you to know, you cannot love God in the world at the same time. It is impossible. Run and tell that. So all the preacher down there in Georgia said, I, I can't go to the movies. That preacher, I didn't say you couldn't go to the movies. That preacher down there well, said, I can't do the thing that I can do with my children. And when they started flipping and bobbing, you flipping and bobbing. Hey, Amen. Still dancing in the spirit, you dancing in the flesh. You know what I tell people? Get the world to act the way you do. Oh, it, you, it's getting so you can't tell the saints from the ain'ts. You know when I first got saved, I could tell I, I knew when I walked up into this church, this sanctuary, that was a different in them women that was sitting in the morning. Bed. That was a different in them, amen. I can see God Almighty. I can see the difference. Now, Lord and behold, we can't tell the difference no more. Everybody look alike. People trying to preach clothes off people now. Who I'm talking to? Well, uh, uh, you can't put this on. And they get that modest prayer script. I'm not even going to go that way. But he rose. I'm not going to go there tonight. Help me, Holy Ghost. A person being crucified in that day was stripped naked. Come on, somebody. I know down in South Beach, Florida, they don't mind being naked down there. I mean, they walk around in South Beach, everybody butterball naked like a butterball turkey. You just come on to South Beach, we have a ball down here. Even you got Christians, it's like so-called born-again folks headed to South Beach. Can't get it up. I want to go where I can take it all off. Lord, have mercy. I want to go down to South Miami, that South Beach, where uh, uh, they got a beach party down there. Who I'm talking to? Oh, yeah, yeah, we we, we, we going to have a beach gathering in the church, amen. But let me continue with my message. Oh, I feel good this evening. Oh, you know, when you ain't done it for a few minutes, amen, amen, it makes you feel. But it was humiliation to strip a man down to bow bone naked. Some scholars said he whipped them all night. I, I, I didn't know to read that part, but I, I've heard it said, amen, 
You know, we as we as preachers sometimes we just hear people say things over and over and over again, and we just well, yeah, you know, they went them all night long and all of that. Amen. Praise God. But show me that in the scripture, huh? Well, let's let, let's die because the Bible don't tell you everything. Amen. Let's be liars. Amen. The Bible don't. The Bible give you just enough. Watch me now. I'm gonna say something here. The Bible tell you just enough to keep you out of the lake of fire. You young people, y'all catch that? Huh? Did y'all catch that? Don't let me. Don't let me get on my seven forty seven and leave you dragging now. I say it again. The word of God will give you enough. To keep you out of the lake of fire that burn up with brimstone where the fire is never quenched. But let's go with it. The scholars say they whipped them all night long. Okay. They whipped them to un I was unrecognizable. Amen. I know that must have been an ultra sight to see. Amen. I seen hogs slaughtered. Amen. Praise God. When I was a little boy, amen, they used to take a hog down and they would slice him up. My, my, my brother know what I'm talking about. They would take that hog and they would skin him. Amen. They would skin that meat off of that hog. Amen. And you can see that bad muscle. Amen. Which we call meat. Amen. Praise God. But listen now. Can you imagine someone being hit with canker worms in the flesh? Peeling off of his body, amen. I'm telling you, saints of God, he was humiliated. But he kept on going towards the cross. But let me get to my story. Jesus told him in St. John 16 and 7. He said, now, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. I want you to know, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Some folks don't want the truth. You know what the man say? You can't take the truth. But what is the truth? It's found right here in these 66 books of the B-I-B-L-E. It's right here in the Word. If you can, the Bible, Jesus said, if you can eat my blood, then you can be my disciple. If you can eat my word, then you can be my disciple. The problem is we get a, just a little bit of double do and that we call it quit. Imagine if people got a little saved. You know, to be part time saved is to be totally lost. Who I'm talking to? I ask people, I say, are oh, you saying, well, you know, you know, uh, Dennis, I, I, I treat everybody. I ain't asked you, did you treat everybody right? The devil treat people right. Who I'm talking to? They dance all around the question. I said, man, have you been born again? Well, you know, I, I, I got some new shoes. I, I got a new hat. Man, now, come on now. I've been in this gospel, amen, since 1985, amen. I got ordained in 2011, amen. I come a long way, amen, praise God. Uh, you can tell, or you can tell who you are by the fruit that you bear. What coming out of your mouth tell me who you are. Good God Almighty, help me, Holy Spirit. Well, you judging me No. What coming out of your mouth? Well, the Bible says not what goes into the files of man, it comes out of his mouth. And what comes out of his mouth comes from his heart. Oh, I'm just trying to get along with the world. That's your problem right there. You're trying to get along with the world. God didn't save you to get along with the world. That people don't want to be uncomfortable. They want to stay where they at. Now we're growing spiritually. Never grow up. God didn't save you to just to sit around. God saved you to build his kingdom. That's why the Bible said his kingdom come. His kingdom is already here. And you either living in God's kingdom right now or you living in the devil's kingdom. The God of this world is Satan. He has blinded them. Are you blind? I decree in the 
declare the Holy Spirit allows me to see what the world can't see. The Holy Spirit allows me to hear what the world can't hear. I'm different and I'm glad I'm different. I ain't got no shame. Nevertheless, he said in St. John 16 and 7, you can read it when you get time. Amen. Listen, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, will not, not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Understand that, and the disciples didn't understand that, but it's hindsight now. They couldn't grip that, amen. The disciples wanted to go with Jesus. Who wouldn't? Jesus had came and told them all the stories, and amen, praise God. And they were sitting around when Jesus told them, say, I'll go away. They said, well, where are you going? Can I go too? But Jesus said in the, in the, in the book, book of St. John, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Uh, that where I may, you may be also. And he said, now in my father's house. Uh, that I may have been imagined. If it were not so, I would have said so. Oh, death, where is that scram? He said, if I go away, nevertheless, I'll send you a comforter. Just before he was put to death, he was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Why, why, why would you bring that up, preacher man? Why would you bring up the 30 pieces of silver? We already know that, uh, that Judas betrayed him. That's that what, that what people do. That, that, and that when you get some revelation, when you go deep, he was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. In other words, money is betraying you. Money, 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 money. That's what's wrong with America now. They're being betrayed by the love of money. The Bible decree and the crowd of love of money is the root of all evil. And you ain't got to go too far to see that Holy Ghost true. I got to have money. I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to have it. Trying to climb that corporate ladder. Trying to get to the top. Don't care who they step on, I'm going to keep on climbing till I get to the top. Never receive it. Oh, that money. Got to have that money. Huh? Even got preachers doing it now. They got the scratches. You know, it's a bad deal to see a preacher scratching for numbers. Huh? Oh, y'all ain't got to say nothing. I see you, big sis. Say amen, sis. Yeah. Hey, look, 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 look. And this is another thing. Well, you know, amen, praise God. You did all of that. Now you're trying to tell. You know, I done heard all of that. Amen. But listen to this. It took all of that to get me where I'm at today. And I'm glad. If I had to go back and change something in my life, you know what I would change? I wouldn't change one thing. Why? Because I'm saved and sanctified today and filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, and got a mind to serve God and got getting ready to make a one-way trip up out of here and my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I know my time ain't long, but I'm getting proud I'm packing up every day and when I'm dead and gone, this word of God will come and put salvation on you. You say, well, preacher man, how you know that to be true? I, I was watching Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts been dead a few years, but he's still preaching. Huh? He was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Money. See, when Judas figured that Jesus was going away, he had to find a way to make him some money. He didn't want no more part of this Jesus once he found him. He was the treasurer. Hey Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When Judas found out that Jesus was talking about getting up out of here, hey Amen, and being dead, and, and Jesus told him, said, the son of man must lay down, and all that, Judas said, well, I'm counting in my lot now, like some of you. Judas figured, I'm going to live now. Judas played that credit card life. Live now and die later. Huh? 
That's what Judas like. He's going to live now. Some of folks now not worrying about life after this. They worried about life now. But you know, amen, I, I think people have not say that is a miserable life you can have. You say, well, preacher, man, oh, wait a minute. Some of them boys out in the LA, they got plenty of money. They got, they got road horses riding around on little jacks, and they got big 70-foot square homes, amen. But you know what I say? I go back to the Word of God. It's so good to know the Word. It won't be proper to man to gain a whole world. And lose his only thing he got is his soul. <laughs> Some preaching good for you. Think about it. When I think about it, it must be miserable. And then hindsight is 2020. Now, if you living for the Lord and you save, amen, praise God, and, and you on your way to heaven, amen, praise God, you say, well, why I got to be poor? Ain't everybody poor. So a man thinking, so is he. I'm sitting here today with a gold suit on. I'm, 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 I'm dressed in gold and purple. I'm just as rich as I want to be. I got the best job in the world that money came by. I'm an ambassador to the most high God. And if you say and sanctified and filled with God, Holy Spirit, amen, you in the same boat I am. You already got a job. Well, surely you would want to get one of those politicians, y'all know, sir. I like just what God gave me, right what he want me to do. Sometimes we're not satisfied with where God put us. But he told him he must rise on the third day. And finally, St. John Joshua, I'm about finished with this story. Jesus knowing, Jesus knowing in St. John 19 and 28, you can read it when you got time, all things were not accomplished. Now what are you saying, preacher man? The all things was accomplished. What Jesus was saying here plainly, amen, that he had done what his father had required him to do. Can you say that? Huh? When it's all said and done, can you say, I'm finished, I'm through, I've accomplished what God has wanted me to do? And if you read that St. John 19 and 28, Jesus knowing that all things, he said something, all things were now accomplished. That means it was finished. There was nothing left for him to do but one thing. Jesus came here for one purpose. You young people, listen to me now. Jesus came here for one purpose. To redeem man back unto himself. That's why he put himself in a body. You got, I ain't got time to go into all that, but I'll bring it to you this year. I tell you, I'm going, I'm going far out this year. Amen, praise God. Uh, G Jesus Christ come through the womb of a woman just like you and me. That's why he can say he's the son of man and the son of God. Amen. Someone didn't catch that. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ come through the womb of a woman just like you and I. But the devil didn't come through no womb. Somebody didn't catch that. Amen. What did that tell you? Amen. Praise God. Somebody figured it out. Amen. The devil then, Satan and his grandmother, they didn't come through no womb of no woman. Amen. But Jesus did. He come through the womb of a woman, amen. That's why he know the right that you take. That's why he say in your belly's womb that they know you. He knew that you was going to take a long time before you got saved. He knew that you was going to be running women. He knew that you were going to be smoking dope. He knew all of these things, amen, praise God. He knew that. But it didn't have to be that way. He said, I know that this, these things have been accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled. He had already knew what the scripture had said.